last time I was here, it was, I think it was March or February, and this was covered in snow, and I wanted to do the Skyline Drive and I couldn't, and I ended up hiking Mary's Rock in snow and ice. Um, and anyway, the reason I'm telling you this is because I've finally come back to Shenandoah National Park. I've even got a t-shirt to celebrate. Um, and I'm gonna give you six things you have to do if you visit Shenandoah National Park. Um, it's a great park. It's uh, about an hour and 25 minutes drive from DC. So it's such a good location and really easy to get to. Um, so here are my top six things that you need to do when you come here. Number one, drive the Skyline Drive. This 105 mile drive hugs the whole ridge of the mountains that the park sits upon. My top tip is to enter at the Thornton Gap entrance. This is approximately one hour and 20 minutes drive from Washington DC. Every couple of miles there are these incredible viewpoints and outlooks where you can get exceptional views of the mountain ranges. One of my favourite things to do in Shenandoah is just watch the sunset. You can hear all the crickets, it's still kind of warm and you just get these incredible views of all the mountains as the sun just melts through them. Whenever anyone goes to a national park, one of the first things I always say that you should do is visit a visitor centre. Um, there the rangers can tell you all about the hikes that they have available. Um, I just realised I don't need to have my mask on right now. Um, but yeah, they can tell you all about the hikes that they have available and the facilities and things. Um, this one opens at 9am. Um, if you're travelling in the pandemic at the moment, the restrictions have changed again and now you have to wear masks indoors, federal buildings, even if you're fully vaccinated, so hence the mask. Um, so I'm just going to go in and see what the rangers have to say. Can you go to the woods and the mountains without camping? So I've come to Big Meadows Campground. I've just started my fire, my tent's all set up, and now I'm looking at the moonlight um, and just enjoying the great outdoors. Of course, if you're going to come to Shenandoah National Park, you have to go hiking. Um, and I'm going to hike up to Hawksbill Summit, which is the highest point in the park. Um, the sun has come up and we're starting to see some of the cool golden leaves. So I'm going to go and check this trail out. While the hike is short, it is steep. You follow these blue blazes as the trail starts to ascend through the forest. While the trail's quite short, it is uphill, um, so I'm a little bit out of breath. But the most amazing thing is happening. The sun is rising in the sky in this glorious red and orange colours, and it's beating through all of the trees to give this effect as if like the whole like forest is on fire almost. It's amazing, it's so beautiful. Um, definitely worth getting up for. So while it's fall, it's still not quite that cold in Shenandoah, so I'm sweating buckets, but this trail, while it's quite short, it's a good workout. It's 1.4 miles um, from the lower option, but there is an upper option as well. But that's more of a rock scramble than a hike. Um, but I've just checked all trails and it's leveling it out somewhat now. It's not as steep and the trees are a lot lower, so I feel like I'm getting closer to the top. 
once you start to get to the top, it becomes super flat and a lot easier. There's also an opportunity to spend some time in the shelter near the summit if you want to hang out for a little bit. There's also a picnic bench available. I just wanted to show you this um, overlook that you get just as you come past the bird's nest um, AT shelter but this isn't even the summit and you can already see all these incredible rolling hills, all these little rocks where there's great photo opportunities um, and you can see that some of the trees are starting to go golden and red before now and it's just so beautiful up here. So this hike, I'm just going to check now to tell you the exact detail. So it took me um, probably about half an hour to get to the top um, and then I spent some time at the top. So I'm guessing it's going to take me about 20 minutes, 15-20 minutes to get down. It's a, I spoke to um, a family just at the top, they helped me take some pictures and um, they said that this, they commented on just how short this hike was. Um, and I think it's because when you go to a lot of these national parks, you get these really intense trails, um, which if you want to get to like see anything, you have to work really hard. Whereas I find in this park, because Shenandoah is so small for a national park, you know, it just hugs this road that a lot of the hikes are short up, but very steep or downhill, very steep. Um, so there's, there's, there's three hikes that I would say give you that short, you know, short hike, but great reward um, for, in terms of views. Um, and those ones are Stony Man, Bear Fence, and this one, um, which is the Hill, it's not Hills, what is it called? Hawksbill, Hawksbill. So those three hikes are all relatively short. They all involve some sort of rock scramble and they all give a great view. Old Rag, which is the most popular one, that's a longer hike. Like that one's gonna take you quite a few hours to do. Um, and then a lot of the other hikes are more like shorter woodlandy trails or to waterfalls. So there's quite a lot that you can do here. Um, but if you're trying to cram things into a short space of time, based on all the reviews and all the pictures I've seen, I think Hawksbill fits, is, fits the bill and is the better one because it's actually the highest point in the park as well. So I think that gives it an edge over some of the others. Bear Fence has a lot more of a rock scramble. So a lot of the reviews that I've read on that hike are that people really have to scramble for that one. Um, and then to a lesser degree, Stony Man, um, which I might still do today actually, if I have time. But um, yeah, really exceptional views and there's some four colors, which I'm all about. So yeah, living my best life. Look out on the trail and we have found ourselves a couple of deer who are just grazing in the forest. Three of them. So of course, whilst it's really important that you hike to a summit in Shenandoah, there's also so many waterfalls. So it's really important that you check out one of those. So I'm checking out Dark Hollow Falls because um, it's October and I feel like it's the most appropriate time of year to hike something with that name. Um, so you initially start um, descending. So this is a similar hike um, to Hawksbill. It's going to take, it's about a mile and a half. Um, and it's probably going to take an hour and a half um, but it's downhill the whole way and then uphill the whole way back so the parking lot is quite small so arrive early so that you get a space don't fall like me um, I just bought myself a new Shenandoah t-shirt um, in the visitor centre so I've decided to wear that on my hike as well um, so yeah let's check it out
quite quickly you start to come down on some steps and it's quite slippy and muddy um, but as you can see I'm just covered in all of these golden leaves which is so incredible. Um, and there's also um, a few patches where it's quite steep. Um, this last section now to get down to the lower falls viewpoint is pretty much a thousand feet downhill in a really short space of time. So I think if you were elderly or you had knee issues, you might find this one a little bit too hard. But for anyone else, as long as you take your time and you watch a step, you'll be absolutely fine. If you're going to do this hike, I would say give yourself some time to queue at the bottom because there's so many people down there all trying to get, and rightly so, a shot and um, photos of the falls, but it's not a very big space. So I would either go early in the day or late in the day, um, or just be prepared to hang around a little bit. It's a little bit busy, but it's a very small area. Um, but the falls are really cool. I mean. You know, you can't really compare them to like Yosemite Falls and stuff like that, but it gives you that country Virginia vibe. And um, yeah, I think it's really cool and really worth it. The hike back is uphill, so as you can see, I'm already a little bit out of breath. Um, but just stop, bring some water. I mean, it's quite warm down here as well. So yeah, definitely a hike worth hiking. So once again, that's Dark Hollow Falls for your Falls Waterfalls hike in Shenandoah National Park. These are just some of the incredible things that you can do in Shenandoah. There is so much more than just these six things, but if you only have a short amount of time, this is what I reckon you should do. If you've got any feedback, write in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe.